I'm deciding now whether or not I'm actually going to stay put here because I'm out for three days, Saturday night and again tonight, Sunday night. So uh, I was planning on actually striking down the Basher and leaving here about now to go to another island about four miles up uh, the River Thames. Uh, one which I've wrecked before but not actually uh, wild camped on. So, um, but I don't know, I just feel a bit sort of, you know, you get those days when you just fancy a chill mood. So I might stay here, maybe paddle up there in the dark. I don't know, I know the area, so I know my um, navigation. So it won't be a problem getting there in the dark. But because I'm going to be making my way back tomorrow late afternoon, I don't want to be rushing around because there were some things I wanted to do on the other island that I was considering camping on. Um, but I think it might be just a bit too much rushing around. So I might actually stay here for a second night and then get up early and then just go for a paddle around some areas that I've not actually frequented that much. So um, watch this space, I'm gonna see what I'm gonna do. Okay, um, about 20 minutes have just gone and about 50 meters away, just under 50 meters, two canoeists have just moored up on the bank virtually the direction I'm looking now, not even 50 metres away. I can actually see them, but they can't see me. So now <laughs> it's, um, what do I do? Do I play stealth mode and stay here for as long as possible without them knowing that I'm here? Because um, I very much doubt they're going to walk into this bit of the outback. Initially what I heard was a big bang and it sounded like a very solid piece of wood being hit, not being chopped. And it's a noise I didn't recognise and the actual sound of it acoustically sounded that it was actually by the riverbank. Then Akasha, she reacted to it, didn't you? She got her ears pricked back now, she's waiting. And she barked, so I thought there's someone there and I could tell by her body language it was a human being, it was a person. Because she's about four different sort of reactions that I can read on her, whether it's a wild animal, uh, someone walking their dog or somebody, a person. And um, from what I've seen, I've done a very stealthy recce and there's two young guys in their early 20s. Obviously I had to do a bit of bushcrafting. What I could do, I could do my face up with mud, do something really scary and jump out of the bushes at them and scare the out of them, just for a laugh and then attack them with a flip flip, flip flop. It's whether or not I use it as an exercise in stealth, carry on functioning here, which I can do, because I don't have to actually light the fire because I've got the single burner stove, and just making a, an exercise out of this. <laughs> SHTF bug out scenario. The authorities are looking for you. Right, I can see some smoke. They've lit a fire. Just there is a smoke you should see just trailing up just above that shrubbery. Camera might just get it. So it's whether or not I actually go and get some firewood before it starts getting dark. It's 6.30 p.m. So I've got about another hour and a half, well about two hours of reasonable daylight. So it's whether or not I let them know that I'm here. Obviously, they keep their space, I keep mine. That's only if I want to actually strike a fire up. And I did fancy actually lighting a fire a bit later on, especially if there's a bit of a chill factor, because I think the sky is going to clear, so any heat that's come through is going to rise. So it's going to make the ground level a little bit cooler. So um, I'm going to think this through. Whether or not it's just carry on as I was going to do, or play a game of stealth. Okay, the latest update. It's Sunday night at eight o'clock and uh, I decided to uh, go and check the guys out. And there's just two guys out, about mid twenties, out to do a bit of fishing and they've been up here before. So I broke the ice with them in case they thought I was the wild man of Borneo or something, escaped from some prison. <laughs> I thought our oh, best thing to do. Um, I'll stay here for another night as you can see. I've got the fire going. They had a bit of a problem with uh, their fire because I want to cook some sausages on the riverbank. So I went and got some uh, dry foliage tinder for them so that they could place it on top of the coals which were dying out of the fire, which they'd sort of bolt together a bit too much. 
and then to put this dry foliage tinder on the top, a big clump of it about the size of a football, to draw the flames up through it and they did that and it um, struck the fire again so they were quite happy about that so that was my good deed for the day. So I thought rather than go stealth I'll, um, I'll just be non-stealth. So I've got the fire going. So I'm just going to chill for another night here on the same spot, base camp, and um, maybe I think the weather's, it's, the sky's quite clear so I think it's going to be a bit more chilly this evening. Just the feel in the air, um, say the cl whatever, very very thin cloud. We did have some rain this morning, as soon as dawn broke uh, there was some, a few intermittent showers. But uh, by the time I sort of woke up and got up to start the day, um, it cleared up. So uh, there's, a, there's definitely a freshness in the air more than what there was last night. So I'll definitely keep the fire going until I go to sleep. Okay, this is a brief name drop to Nick in the United States and his YouTube channel is White Tail Bushcraft. And uh, I've been following some of his stuff and there was a recent video he put up just getting outdoors, he'd done some fishing, he was cooking over the fire and uh, so we commented via this particular video besides other ones that we've we've sort of been in contact with um, this particular one he got a vegetable similar to this this is a version of a large courgette it's within the marrow family uh, of vegetables but this particular video that Nick did of whitetail bushcraft um, he got what would we'd know in Europe as a butternut squash sort of similar to this but what he did he took out all the inside and he stuffed it with venison uh, mince, which I presume he may be culled himself because he does a lot of hunting and what have you. Anyway, I had this big sort of slab of mince that he put in the, um, the uh, butternut squash and then just put it in the embers of the fire and left it to cook. And of course, I messaged him a second message, I think, to say, oh, that looks really tasty. Um, I've done a lot of sort of different vegetables over the fire, but I never actually thought of maybe putting meat in a butternut squash as such. Um, although I've sort of stuffed different vegetables before. So I said the next time I told him about this, which was given to me by a student of mine and uh, it was grown in her back garden so it's all organic and really, I mean you can eat these raw, they're so nice and tasty. So, um, and I messaged him and I said, right, next time I'm out I'm going to be taking my homegrown, given to me by a student, marrow and if I don't stuff it then I'll, um, I'll maybe put something in it. I can't think yet what to put in but I might just cook it as it is. So I told him I'd let him know. <laughs> so this is a shout out to you Nick. Here's the marrow. Cheers mate. You can see on the left there is going to be the big soup, beef and dumplings, sweet corn, put in a saucepan I'm going to add the old beef flavoured oxo cube to it and a clove of garlic and have that for dinner with the stuffed marrow. I don't know what I'm going to put into it yet, I might just have it as it is. Okay, it's now Monday morning about 9.30. Uh, I'm going to wake myself up with a nice cold water suddy wash. So I'm just stripped to the waist at the moment. Ready to have an all over body wash right down to my toes. And uh, nice fresh cold water, suddy water in the old vinyl collapsible bowl. Ready to have an all over wash, freshen up for the day. Clean change of clothes. And it looks like it's going to be a pretty clear day. just dry myself off top half of the body with one of these uh, microfiber small towels As you can see I just sort of try and hold it up so I can see quite small really well it folds up really small imagine that I mean that space being taken up folded it's about a meter 1.2 meters by about 75 so obligatory drab green colour so I'm just going to dry myself off now and uh, excuse me while I wash my lower half
Okay, got my breakfast on the go, all nicely freshened up after having a wash, clean change of clothes, and this porridge is cooking through nicely. So I'm going to have some scoff, first meal of the day. A few minutes ago there were two squirrels up in that tree. I was just sitting under the tarp just now having a cup of tea and uh, Karsh was sitting down with me chilling out relaxed and all of a sudden she lifted her head she can smell something and then stood up and I could tell by her body language I thought she looked into the tree and I thought she's seen squirrels and there was two of them rummaging around just up there so I thought hmm add that to the recipe waterfowl um, <laughs> and a Victorian delicacy squirrel meat if that's something to consider survival but uh, yeah, I could tell by body, I thought, yeah, she's seen two squirrels. So the odds are, considering I'm on an island here, um, they're going to be the majority of the time, unless they actually cross over on other people's boats, houseboats and that sort of thing, or swim across. But um, yeah, I was hoping to maybe catch a bit of that on film, but uh, they died off too quickly. But anyway, as far as um, other reviews I've got in the pipeline, so I'm going to be featuring, besides other kit and travels and things like that, I'm going to be featuring, because of my profession has been involved with fitness, exercise, nutrition, that sort of thing, um, easy to understand ideas of keeping hydrated, the right nutrition, that sort of thing, very easy to understand stuff, nothing sort of biological and super technical. Um, but I'm going to share some ideas with you because we, you know, we think about, about looking after our kit, you know, keeping our knives sharp, having all the latest stuff. Um, and obviously having stuff that's appropriate for when we're outdoors and living in the wild, camping, canoeing, fishing, whatever we're doing. Um, but very seldom do we really think about keeping ourselves in condition. I'm not talking about super fitness, I'm just talking about keeping in condition because we can have all the kit, but if our body's not working properly, then, um, you know, sometimes that's the thing that will actually fail. So it's keeping ourselves uh, nutritionally sustained. Um, uh, how to keep in condition, not in shape, because being in shape is totally different than being in condition. Um, but I'll be talking about things like that in the near future to help with our outward bound pursuits and things like that. So that's all in the pipeline, things to come. So um, I'm going to sign off now, Th say thanks for joining me on this uh, slightly different tarp setup. And I'll catch you in another video soon. Cheers.